one table, two dozen farm fresh eggs, three pounds of organic coffee, 18 poblano peppers, 12 fillets of mahi-mahi, 10 ribeye steaks, and one reason to save room for dessert. At Cisco, delivering the best ingredients to great restaurants is what we do. You can always be sure that good things come from Cisco. Networking like you've never seen it. Inspiring words from an industry giant, and we're talking about your Shiro's. Up next on WFF TV, sponsored by Cisco. Hi everybody, welcome back to WFF TV, sponsored by Cisco. I'm Carrie Farinag. Tuesday's conference theme is all about individuals and how each one of us can change the face of leadership right where we are. You have the Gen Xers, God bless you, two more decades in your career, but you only make up 17% of the workforce. And here come 80 million millennials. So how's this gonna work? Joni Doolin from TD and 2K kicked off the morning with eye-opening data on millennials and talent management. Five years from now, millennials will be 50% of the workplace. Doolin told attendees that millennials want to work for organizations that focus on purpose, not profit. She encouraged conference goers to acknowledge and embrace the idea that the face of leadership is different and getting younger. Baby boomers have controlled four generations and now there's this gap of talent and then, but there's this huge wave coming that um, acts very differently and I think the purpose, you know, the uh, working for companies that have a purpose and how critical that is and it's not just about shareholder value anymore. It's not just about money, it's about so much more and to win the talent war, if you don't get that, you're going to lose. Coca-Cola CEO Mutar Kent echoed some of those same thoughts during this electric and thought-provoking conversation with WFF President Hattie Hill. How can you ignore it? that talent out there. Um, and, you know, one thing that I've learned in my business life, worked, having worked on four continents, um, is that diversity brings the best ideas and brings the best decisions. Kent told the audience that the 21st century is the century of women and offered valuable advice for all members of the audience. Kent told executives to think of themselves as the designers in chief and encourage them to enable the culture to promote and encourage women. He encouraged emerging executives and others to share best practices with other women, take risks on people and make a decision, and set up an environment for informal mentoring. For the emerging and young leaders, Kent's advice was to design their individual paths. Never ever in the period of the world has there been a, an opportunity for youngsters uh, in that age group uh, to actually um, impact the world in a positive way. So I would say to them, be excited, stay excited, and make sure that uh, you are well connected and that you see a great future for yourselves, which there is. So I was really impressed with the, what Coca-Cola is doing for women. Uh, I was aware that it's their uh, big organization uh, helping the world, but I didn't know they had such a big focus on helping women move forward. So uh, my main takeaway is that if they can do it, uh, a lot of other companies can do it as well in a small scale. From there, attendees broke out into their education sessions. This one explained things that the top 1% of people do that make them successful and influential. How many people in this room have ever read a book on trust? How many people have actually read a book, a book of any kind? <laughs> Speaker and bestseller author Garrison Wynn explained the most influential people make people feel valuable. They're good at explaining value, and they know the impact of clarity. They don't let their brilliance prevent them from making sense. He said the number one reason people resist change is because no one wants to be a senior beginner, and shared three things all humans really want. If you really want influence, you have to understand that everybody has the same agenda. People want three things. They want love, money, and prestige. You can give them that, then you have all the influence you need. If people know that you, you know, you're being who you really are, uh, that you have multiple solutions for a single problem, and they'll look good to others by working with you, they're going to listen to what you say. They're going to want for you to be the person that directs them. Change is not the issue. Change is something that's always going to happen. Um, how Garrison pointed out, he had us all cross our arms, and then he said, now do it the other way. And it feels funny, um, but he said if you were to sit there and hold your arms like that for a couple hours, um, that it wouldn't feel funny anymore. So it's the resistance to change, not the actual change that's the issue. 
then networking with Leaders Luncheon returned in 2015, backed by popular demand. This had been an integral part of the conference in early years when the attendance was under 500 people. Now, with 3,000 attendees, it's more lively than ever. Industry leaders at each table led engaging small collaborative sessions. Former McDonald's CEO Don Thompson told attendees, networking starts with building relationships. The first thing I'd say is be genuine in building the relationship. The second one that I would say is be open. Because if you are open to talking to someone that is totally different than you are, you will find the greatest growth because in diversity, we find the greatest growth. And a third part I would say is be active. If you have a real relationship, have a real relationship. Make sure that your relationships don't become transactional for your benefit, which means that every now and then you may make a call to someone just to say, how you doing? There are so many folks here to network with, and networking does not just stop when you get the job. WFF-TV's Rhonda Craig has more networking tips for today's leaders. Thanks, Carrie. When it comes to networking, walking up to a complete stranger can be intimidating. I asked attendees to share some of their best tips for making a lasting impression. So what I try to think of it as is a two-way street. You want to get to know someone well enough that they may be able to help you in your career, toss you an opportunity when something comes up, but you also want to get to know that person well enough that you can help them and get back to them in the same way. Share your story. Ask for advice. That's the best way to help break the ice between people and hopefully to draw a connection with someone. People love talking about themselves, so just ask them all the questions and just really hear from them. From building your network to growing your personal brand, in this education session, speaker John Izzo asked attendees to define success. Defining that means identifying your core values. He encouraged attendees to be intentional. Every moment and meeting is connected to your brand. Some of those top brand killers, negativity and not taking responsibility for mistakes. Really challenged people to go out on a feedback mission to identify five or six people who would tell them the truth, good and bad, about why they're admired already and what their strengths are and what they need to improve in terms of growing their brand at work. And so I really sent them out to, to really go on that mission and when they get that feedback to simply say thank you, tell me more, not to defend, but to just open up and really listen to the things that others can teach them about how they can grow their brand. And on the topic of feedback, WFF wants to hear from you. Let's send it back to Carrie for more on the social experience. Thanks, Rhonda. Don't forget to share your takeaways with us all online. Tuesday's social conversation was about Shiro's. We asked who made your list and why. Hi, uh, my Shiro is Genevieve Thiers, who is the founder of Sitter City. I appreciated her passion and her willingness to go, and, go out and do whatever it takes to just fulfill this idea of finding babysitters. It's, it's probably really cliche, but I think my mom is my Shiro. Um, she's someone who has inspired me to not be afraid and speak up for what I stand in. And um, she's always encouraging me and helps me to believe that I can do anything I've set my mind to. Conference is coming to a close, and we want to hear about your most memorable moments. For Wednesday's social experience, share your favorite conference photo, moment, or quote using the hashtags WFFCONF15 and hashtag moments that matter. After a day packed with inspiration and education, attendees continued networking at the closing reception. We'll leave you with some sights and sounds from that event right here on WFF-TV, sponsored by Cisco.